of your Express, very basic Express app that I've done um, with your Roku. Okay, so first thing you're gonna do is you're you're gonna click you can just click sign up. If you haven't signed up, definitely sign up. Um, the next thing uh, you can do is you can just go down to the bottom. Lots of times you'll find uh, there's really good information very plainly to see here, such as documentation, like what is Heroku. Um, yeah, this is where I usually look. Just look, take a look around. So it's going to learn about the platform. Um, this is what every developer does. So what's going on. They have a podcast that I listen to. That's pretty good. So you go to documentation, you click node. Getting started on Heroku with node. Hmm. Deploying node apps on Heroku. Let's see here what we got. The tutorial assumes uh, that you've been deploying a node app to Heroku. Okay. So did you set up your Heroku account? If you haven't, do that now. Okay. So I paused the video uh, and tried to give you a pause there for a moment before I start. So I'm ready to start. Okay. Let's go take a look. Now you're going to have to install Brew. Download installer. Use this. If you don't know what Brew is, then definitely use that. There's the installation. There's your Windows. Uh, those who don't use Mac can use this one. <laughs> I didn't even realize that existed. I've been using Brew for, for many years now. And so yeah, once you have it installed, it goes through your different operating systems to see, then you do a login. Okay, so if I go here, on mine. Let's see, clear that. Go Heroku. Let me see what it shows first because I'm already logged in. So it doesn't say anything about uh, what I have logged in as or anything, so that's wonderful. Um, but then you'll get definitely get this as a generic one because it doesn't, it clearly doesn't check your set state. I'm set as logged in. So I will choose Q, okay, press any key to open up the browser to login or Q to exit. So I will exit. But if you have a Heroku account and you do log in, it will go through this process. It will open a browser, okay? So you know, you can check your node version and everything like that. Um, now check that you have Git installed. If not, install it. Heroku uses Git. Um, You'll see actually later on, it'll become obvious. So, this is their getting started one. You can CD into it. I wouldn't, I wouldn't worry about it. I should say, I wouldn't worry about it if you have my app. If you have my app, then you basically already skipped beyond that stage and you should be in your, in your, inside the app that you've cloned from, from me by following along in the video. So then you go Heroku Create, okay? Heroku Create. There we go. Pull that up a bit more, there we go. So if I go here, will it open this? No, it won't, here let me just bring it over to this page. It's empty, right? All to be expected. Okay, so now we want to push Hero, get push Heroku Master. So go back here. Oh, I, darn it anyway. Click the wrong one. Copy and paste. <coughs> There's actually a keyboard shortcut to do that, what I just did, delete. But I always um, forget it. I don't know why. Uh, there we go. Okay. Uh, ah. Okay, just a moment. Okay, I made a boo boo, and the reason was is because I didn't initialize the Git repository um, before I did uh, try to do Git 
for Shiroku, which is what it was telling me to do. Uh, so I did git create Hiroku create, which I shouldn't have done. And then I did git push Heroku master, which it actually doesn't say, I think, because it's because it's doing the cloning, it's it, it in order to git clone, you have to have git and in, when you clone a git, it automatically means that you now have this repo. So you essentially it's like going git init. Um so that was my my mistake is that I ignored that uh, part and I just went to Heroku create. So so this is so then I did this and then I tried to push it and it says there's no git repository which it wasn't. Then I thought okay I'm going to initialize my git then I'm going to push it again and it still said failed to push um, some refs but basically everything. Uh, and that was when I realized wait a second I actually I have to make my commits um, and then once I made my commits, it did, 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 did all those things, updated all those files. Let's just ignore. Yeah, everything's good. Uh, and then what I did is I did git push, and then it didn't. Does not appear to be in the git repository, and it doesn't because when I did do the Heroku create, I didn't have a git repository. So this one actually is probably floating in the ether. So then I did Heroku create again. Then I did git push Heroku master, which at this point I'm bang on with the, the following, all the, the rules and everything. And then all these wonderful things happened. And there we go. I just pushed it up. That was the end. So now it's on Heroku under this name. So if I click that, actually, no, don't cancel, cancel. Uh, copy and then go to here. No, that's not what I wanted. Uh, where did I grab this one? I want to grab this one. There we go. That's better. So then the app goes. Where did I? Oh, it's not a play to ensure that at least one instance is running. Okay, well, let's see if it is running. Then now running web app, okay. Application error. Give me a Okay, so off the top of my head, um, it should be working. Off the top of my head. I don't like it when it's so noisy. Let's do that. Okay, it doesn't. Okay, so now let's go to my Let's go here. Um, let's refresh. Should be another one. Okay, so which one are we using this time? It is Quiet Retreat. I'm like a huge fan of like deleting stuff that I um, I don't use. So let's see. I don't, I, to be fair though, I also don't delete very often. Okay, delete, uh, delete app, quiet retreat. Let's go to activity, it's deployed. Let's see what we got. That should be there. Our views are there. Server. I'm willing to bet because I usually don't use server. Let's go back for a second. Let's find this this repo. Let's go. <coughs> I wonder if it could be just a simple issue of. Uh, mm hmm. It's index and index. I wonder if that's as simple as it is. Let's let's change that to index. And then yeah, and this is this is oh that's even worse. Yeah. I wonder it, I think it would have worked. So let's go server and then server like that. 
and then let's push it again. Mm, everything's up to date. Git add that file. Commit. Actually, I'm changed. Package.json uh, main uh, file uh, name. There we go. Git push. I just want git push. And then I'm going to go to git push Heroku. That's the change. It's probably actually still running. This does take a moment. Yeah, it's still running. Let's leave this up here. Pruning, build succeeded, compressing. I'll just pause for a moment. Oh, it's done. Go for it. Do, 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 do. Let's cancel it. Close that. It's a bit bizarre. Where did I put the? There it is. Well, that's busy. Not working. I'm going to click here. So we got the new one, version two, three, four, quite tricky. Okay. Let's see if it opens here. It's saying at the bottom here. I think I'm just gonna fall back to my yeah. Let's see here. Error. App crashed, app crashed, app crashed. I have to take a look. Take a quick look and see what's going on. Server. with this one but I'm gonna just I'm gonna definitely try to eliminate a couple pieces here just to see if I can figure out where the problem exactly is so now we have a home page that home page pulls from this that's fine and then we're gonna get rid of server we're gonna go with index because that's what I've always done and then we'll go here and then we'll go index and then index so all of those should work now okay oh I know I know one that's important um, so what you want here this can't be like that process env port port okay so what you want is actually you would do it up here like this cost port is equal to process port or 5500 like that and then you go port and you take the result of whatever happens there that's important that's definitely probably more likely to have caused the problem than the rest of the changes that I've made. 
include as a boolean. Okay, I'm using template strings so that it will interpret port, whatever it is, dynamically. Um, so let's close that down. Let's add in another commit. It shows what's happened on the command line by um, uh, in a history automatically if you push the up arrow. But actually, instead of using the command line, I'll just use this because I know you'll all be new to this. So I've, as far as Git's concerned, it's deleted the file, and then it made a new file, and that file was called this. That's how Git works. It doesn't notice that it's there's that kind of change. Let's see what we got here. This changed. This all changed. Okay, that's fine. So then the message that I put down here like this. Let's see. You saw me do it like that. There we go. First commit. So we get add uh, everything. So I added everything. And then I go git commit. And then I write my message. So um, what was it? The change that I did. I made a uh, change to the port. Made uh, environment port and it made port dynamic number dynamic with env process env and uh, changed name to index dot js there we go it's it's always wants you to keep it under 50 but it's, it's always possible and <coughs> so now I can push it. Everything's going up there. That's great. Uh, let's see, everything's good. So, yeah, this definitely shouldn't be an issue. But it's not going to work yet. Here we go. There it is. Okay. And now if we add this back in, that should be fine. Also, we'll go over here again. But you know what? Actually, maybe you want to see me do it on the command line that you now that you've seen me do it there. And then the other way and just kind of rope it back. So git can git add. So what files do I want to add? I want to add index.js. So I can add all files by using git dot or more correctly, .js, I can go like that, git add that file. Watch, see, it moves the stage. Now, git commit dash m for message. Always should commit your commits with a message. Um, removed comment out, uh, not removed comment out, like uh, uncommented, such good English. Um, Great English uh, uncommented out uh, uh, dot post out. There we go. Git commit. Just saying one child and x number of insertions and wonderful things like that. Now I push it up to git uh, to to Heroku. See, it's actually showing in the activity feed here. Uh, we're still waiting. All those wonderful things that it's doing. You'll notice here, um, it's talking about engines. Um, it has a default. So when you don't know to put it in there, uh, it graciously does that for you. And a lot of times that really won't cause a problem. Especially with me right now because I'm running 12. Uh, the latest 12, version 12 of Node. Um, but you can run into problems like that. So now version six has been deployed. That's it there. Let's open the app. Clicking open. Boom, there's no differences. I'm gonna say data and then data at gmail.com and then some numbers. And let's see if this works. There it is. Boom. But we're on the post page, remember? We had to do that earlier. I was showing you how. Let's see side by side, open to the side. So then we have uh, post, 
uh, no, not post this one. What I'm focusing on here, let me just close this. What I'm focusing on is data dot title. That's the original, and then now new data dot title, and that is all from this new data, passing in new data. Whereas above in the index, the original route, I just pass in data, which is this, and then it stays here and renders the new data. Let's see Bob. Gmail.com is where to find me. Okay, what do you think is going to happen? Take a moment, think about it. <coughs> pause them, pause this video if you need to. Okay, I'm going to show you now. Uh oh. What happened? I leave it to your imagination to figure out. It's not really uh, critical to this video. But this is a first step to learning how applications work without a database. Okay. Let's see where else it goes. Deploying. Do we have anywhere else? I have deployed my app. We actually did that to see what was going on, if you remember. Um, so ironically, <coughs> did that. There it is. There it is user. Da, 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 da. Now, there we go. You know, eh? There we go. And define a proc file. Don't need to do that. <coughs> it's probably worth exploring what a proc file is. Uh, let's see, we attach it. Here's that. Da, da. Nope, no need to talk about that. Um, scale the app. Okay. Let's see, actually, this is an example of something I missed. And I referred to it, um, but I didn't actually show you. Let's see, go to package. So let's see how they they do it to see if they do it any different. Oh, okay, yeah. So it goes after this on there. So I actually like to have it right either here before or right here. I don't really have a reason why I do it one place over the other. I think it just looks better here. <coughs> so now when it runs, your build process, I'll go back for a second. What was it? Where is it? There it is. It says engines unspecified and npm unspecified resolving to the node version 12x. Downloading and installing 12.61. Guess which one I use? Need a. So they only accept up the first number and then they use whatever's the latest for the next number. It's for what I would assume is. Um, security reasons. So let me just make a quick little commit dash m last commit there we go git no roku push origin master what did I do different? Get oh my god, get push or Roku. Yeah, it's. I wasn't thinking. There it is, though. See? It's not unspecified anymore. See? The NPM is unspecified, but the engine is not. So the app will, of course, be running. We'll close this down, go back to here. So looking, no, I don't want to do a resubmission. And then, yeah, let's just resubmit there. There we go. Everything's working. Wonderful. There we go. Okay. So there you go. That's how you get a basic, basic, basic node app up and running. So there's two things to know is the steps up from here are that you can use uh, Postgres. Um, 
So if you go to the Roku, Roku, uh, Roku, com, and you go to pricing. There's an important nuance here. It should be here. Yeah, student. That's you. Zero dollars a month. There is no um, additional costs. Um, data services. That's cool that they added Redis. I don't remember them adding Redis. Um, <coughs> where is it? Data stores. Maybe it's under data stores. Redis. Postgres. There we go. So Postgres has a pricing plan of free. So you have that option to use Redis. Um, yeah. Let's see, object rockets. Yeah, they won't let you use MongoDB. Um, what was it they were saying? Is it Redis Cloud? So they'll let you use Redis. That's neat. I definitely have to use this once. See what's going on. But if you want to use MongoDB Atlas, you still can. Okay, you make calls to the Atlas uh, database, and they have their free uh, free level. Uh, let's see here. Go to that. I believe it's North Virginia. Do they even show it on here? Yeah, zero dollars per hour. Boom. Okay. That's the advantage to using them, um, not Redis, but to using Heroku and Atlas. Then you have a free level that allows you to launch any app you want, really, um, between those two. And and if you know your SQL or uh, there are many ways around different things. So the point is, is that you have Postgres in Heroku, no um, MongoDB uh, from MongoDB service, and, and that gives you a lot of flexibility. Lots of choice there, okay?